I took a pile of shop junk, odds and ends light parts, and turned it into a nice shop light. I want to show you what I did. I had a bunch of odd and end parts, old lights, none of them worked, bits and pieces, cords, what have you, switches. You can see this pile of here. I may save it, I may not, but I want to show you what I turned this into. And it, I, I was surprised, and I'm going to take you through the process of how I did this. A lot of times in a shop you accumulate broken products, lights, what have you, and sometimes it's worth throwing it away, but other times it's worth saving. And in this particular instance, I almost threw this stuff away, but I decided yesterday to see if I couldn't uh, turn it into something useful. So as you can see this light right here works great. I've got an LED bulb in there which uh, doesn't per put out any heat at all. Well, very little if any. And I had this laying around, this stand. All these parts were in pieces just like I just showed you a moment ter uh, moments ago. And I took those parts and pieced them together and now I have a nice shop light with an LED bulb. Now I want to show you a little bit what I did to get this to look like this. So follow along. And then I have a surprise for you at the end where I took some junk jacks. You can see them in the background there. And I brought those back to life and I want to show you how I did that also. The first thing I had to do is fix the cord and the light switch. The, uh, the light that I have up here had a switch on the back of it that you pushed and it would go on and off. Similar to this right here, this one's missing. So what I did was I took this apart right here and I exposed it. I pulled this cord out and I had other cords that I had cut off other lights and I fished it up in there and I wire nutted everything back together and then I bolted it or attached it back to the back end of this just like that. So we have the cord installed, this installed, and the wires coming out through this from the, uh, the old light into this junction box. Now I didn't put this back together because I wanted to test everything before I did. Now on the inside of one of these lights you have wires that come through this hole right here I don't know if you can see that or not, I'll get it up there a little closer. But that hole right there, wires came through and they went to um, each side of this, this, what I'm going to call the bulb holder. And it has two porcelain ends on each side. Now what I had to do on the one that I repaired is I had to rub one porcelain end, you can see this one's broken. I had to rob one off of another one to put on here so I had two good ends with the wires coming out of them. I fed those wires through this hole just like that and see this bolted in there with two bolts. You can see down in there there's I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's two bolts that go here. And I put that in, fed the wire through, and attached them to my switch so that it would break the circuit. And that was how I wired it together. I put the bulb in, and I tested it to see if it would work. And it did work. So I thought, okay, it works. I can start putting it back together. So I did. I bolted this on, just like I said. Then I got one of the reflectors, and I put it inside there. And the way that reflector attached is these came through like that, and then there's a little 
screw that goes right in the center and that's all that it is to a tet. A t um, and I got that all back together and I went ahead and I thought, well, I'm going to test it again. So I put the bulb in and it didn't work. So I took it all apart again. Now when you're rebuilding stuff out of junk, sometimes you're going to have to take it apart and put it back together several times. Well, I took that apart again and I realized that these tabs right here needed to be bent a little closer together because it wasn't letting my bulb touch and somehow through the years these got bent to where they were too far apart like that they still bolted in there fine but I took a pliers and I bent these tabs a little bit and I put it all back together like I said put that through this hole bolted this down put my reflector in and tested it again and it worked so we were good to go the next thing I did then was I went ahead and mounted the back to this like that with the switch and after that was all together I tested it again to make sure I didn't knock something loose it worked just fine okay the the next step is I wanted to put the guard on it with glass so I had to rub the glass off of one of these to put on that so that it would have a nice glass in it that glass is attached pretty tightly in that frame and I didn't want to mess with it so I took that frame off of one of these with the glass and I attached it <clears throat> and that's fairly simple you have these tabs in the back and tabs on here and all I did was I just ran them in there and see it was like that then okay what holds that from falling out well there's a screw up here that you gotta attach and then there's the bracket that gets bolted on the bottom and this bracket here is one of the leftover brackets the one I used on the new light is a little bit bigger and the reason I used it is I wanted this light higher off of this uh, mounting that I have here you can see that that's a little loose yet and I want to figure out what I need to do to tighten that up I think it's right in here with this pin but I don't know I, I just don't know yet but I have to do something to tighten that up yet and I will I'll get to that but back to this, then I went ahead and I mounted this to this, and all that was is it took, uh, took a little knob, if I can find one here, I thought I had an extra one, I do. It just took a little knob like this that went in here and attached to a bolt. And once I had both sides on, this one's a little bigger than it's supposed to be and once I had both sides on then it was real easy see and then that holds this from falling out so there you, I have the light all put together at least this far and then I took an extra guard and I just worked it in there the way it's supposed to be done and it just clips in I really don't need that other than that it would protect that glass up there but you can see on this one it protects that glass I don't know if I'll turn it off so you can see that just a bit better not sure if you can or not I'll turn it some but you see this right here is is the protector and I thought at the very least um, it would protect the glass and when it had the regular halogen bulbs in there which was extremely hot that would keep you from getting your hands against that glass and burning yourself but I didn't need that I just wanted protection from breaking the glass so all these parts here created this light here with the cord that I salvaged off of one of the old ones and then I had these tripods that were left over from various lights that had quit working 
I have another one sitting over on the shelf, but I chose to use this one. And it's a telescoping tripod. You can open that up. It'll go up and down. Works really nicely. You can adjust this a little bit down here. And this right here is a pin that you're supposed to be able to pull, I think, yeah, let me see, yeah, you're supposed to be able to pull that off, so if you want to use this just for sitting on something instead of on a tripod, you have that option. And quite honestly, I think that's why that sits on there just a little bit loose. And uh, I don't know that there's a lot I'm going to be able to do about that. But uh, because I want that option, I really do. I could have cleaned this stuff up a little bit better. But uh, that's how I took junk and turned it into a nice shop light. I hope you found that interesting. And I would love to hear about your shop junk experiences, how you've taken old junk and, and turned it into something useful. Now to change gears, I want to talk about these old jacks back here. On these jacks, I went to and I was uh, looking at an online auction and I, I'm a sucker for when it comes to finding junk like online and the guy that owned these jacks uh, has had them several years. He passed away. And at least I know the one jack here, the, old, uh, the older one, I'll show you in a minute, has, has probably been around, oh, I'm going to guess at least 50 years, maybe longer. I'd have to do some research on it. I haven't yet. I could be wrong. Good, solid U.S.-made jack, I'm pretty sure, and floor jacks or what some people call them, scooters. And, and then another one that uh, is, uh, comes from overseas, Taiwan or someplace like that. But when I got them in here, neither one of them worked. They're all rusted up, nothing worked on them. And I bought them as junk at an auction. I think I paid, what, three, four dollars or something like that for them. And yesterday I just got in the mood to see if I couldn't get those to work. And I know I should have recorded it, but I didn't. But I want to show you what I did. You can see these two jacks in front of me. And as I just told you, this one right here is a, a Black Hawk. I haven't looked it up yet. It's actually got an identification tag on it or a serial number. Uh, not only on the jack, but it, it's got a matching one here on the cylinder. And my guess is, and I'll look, my guess is this dates back several decades. And the guy I got it off of was just a little younger than me, and I'm assuming his dad used it in his garage. He did different things in his garage repair and that sort of thing. And this jack here is a little newer. I don't know how old, it shows quite a bit of use too. It's still got the heavy cast wheels on it. So that tells me it's got a little age. It was made in Taiwan according to the label that I saw. All I know is they didn't work when I got them. So how did I approach getting these jacks operable? Well, let me bring in a little tighter and I'll start with this red one. And the yellow one I did similar to Okay, the first thing I did was I got my uh, penetrating oils out. And you can see there I have two kinds that I typically use. It's uh, PB Blaster and WD-40. Now there's a reason why I use those. The uh, PB Blaster's got a little oilier to it. It penetrates pretty well. If set for a little longer time, it works excellent. Now the WD-40, I found that to work quicker, but doesn't last quite as long because it doesn't stick to the product as well. But if you are in a hurry, 
You want to get something as thin as it is and as creepy as it goes. When I say creepy, I mean it creeps into the crevices. The WD-40 works well for me. The other container you see there is uh, just my jack oil. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But what I did with these jacks, both of them, is I went ahead and put the WD-40 WD-40 and a PB blaster on all the moving parts just to start to get them loosened up and I'll show you where and you can see so what I did was I got the spray out and I sprayed the handle here on this one it's got a little universal joint in there. I sprayed the wheels. I noticed I missed one under here. That doesn't turn yet, but I need to get. I sprayed this right here so it moves. I sprayed all the, the components where I thought that movement need, uh, where it moved when you put the, or cranked the jack up. And I did the same with this one right here. The second thing I did was I, I tried to move this handle right here. Now this handle controls the hydraulic to go up or down. You turn the handle one way to tighten it up and you can crank on the, uh, on the handle and it takes the jack up. You turn it the other way and it, it lets the pressure off and it goes down. Well, I couldn't turn that handle at all. And so I put more penetrating oil in there and around that universal joint. And then for the heck of it, I took this little nut out right here, or this bolt. And with the jack all the way down, I could see that it was very, very low in oil. So what I did was I poured some of this hydraulic jack oil into it it's uh it's w or aw32 and it's designed for hydraulic jacks and i i always keep a little bit of this in my shop because you never know when your jack's going to be low so i filled that up i mean i filled it up till it was running over and you may say well why would you do that well I wanted it to be full and the thing is once you get that filled like that if you jack it up and you go to lower it if it comes down and you got too much in there it's going to spit out that opening anyway and it did a little bit but not bad so I was able to jack this up after I got this loose and and this little uh, knuckle right in here and let me bring you right into that little knuckle so you can see what I'm talking about so with this handle the way it's designed you can turn that just about in any position like a universal join on a car so right there you turn that and you can see it turning and it actually allowed that jack to go down. You turn it the other way and it, it allows that jack to go up. Uh, then you can start jacking and you can see how nicely that works. And if I turn it, down it goes. And that's the way it's supposed to work. But when I started on this, this was fast. I couldn't move it at all. I thought, what the heck am I going to do if I Put a wrench or a pipe wrench or something on the handle and try turning it I could snap that universal joint then what would I do then because I don't know that I could find parts for this old jack so what I did is I got a, a vice grip and I and I clamped it on the shoulder part of this universal joint right there stuck out about right here I brought this up a little bit and held it in place and I took my hand and I just bumped it and it was tight and it wasn't moving. I thought I'll try it a little harder. I bumped it and sure enough that broke loose. 
My last resort on that would have been to put a little heat on it to help break that rust loose, but I didn't have to. And then once I started moving a little bit, I just kept working it and working it and working it and more penetrating oil, PB Blaster, WD-40 in a combination so I get the effect both ways. Let me bring you out just a little bit so you can see how this jack actually works. You can't see this back here probably, but there's a plunger here and this little roller right here. Now this roller is supposed to spin and right now it's not. So it's just rubbing across there. So I do need to get that to move so it rolls across that nicely. But you can just see that if I put that under a car, rear end and see you can this adjust just a little bit to, to bring that up but let me show you how that goes up it it's really nice and while that's going up I want to show you this uh, there's a couple grease circs back here that I haven't tried yet to get grease into which I will and what I want to do is just clean that thing all the way up I'm not going to restore it all I want to do is get it operable and cleaned up, use the existing patina or paint or whatever you want to call that, leave it where it is so that people can actually see the way this old jack was. It's an original condition, nothing I did to it other than get it loosened and limbered up again, um, new oil. There was one little thing, especially on that yellow jack I had to do. So I'm almost up there, but it's still going. You can see it's still moving. That's about the limit. It might go up a little more, but I want to show you something. See, here's the cylinder. Let me bring you in a little closer on that cylinder. It's the cylinders on these old jacks is, is a reason for concern, and, and I'll tell you why. This cylinder right here is supposed to be really, really smooth. And the reason being is this is like a hydraulic jack, and this has seals in it. If this is too rough and it goes up and down too often, you'll wear that seal out, and then this jack will start to leak. Right now it doesn't leak. But I took some emery cloth and I polished this here cylinder up the best I could, but I saturated it with PB Blaster, penetrating oil, WD-40, and then I put jack oil on it and took it up a few times and down because I wanted that seal to get lubricated good. And right now it is. But, boy, I'll tell you what, if you got any roughness on that at all, take the chance of um, actually ruining your, your seals. And I don't know if this jack, if I could find the seals for it or not, I might be able to. I just don't know. You can see these wheels turn real easy. This one swivels and turns easy back here, but the other one on the other side doesn't. I'm going to lower this jack so you can see how that goes down. I'm, I'm impressed the way it works. Look at that. Right down in place, except it catches just a little bit right in there. You bump it a little and right down in place it goes. And I opened this and you can see my it, it did spew just a little bit of oil out. So it's still working air and oil through. There's the jack on this one. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the other one. This jack right here is, is a Taiwan jack. It says it right there, made in Taiwan. Um, these rollers didn't turn. It didn't go up and down at all. And um, it operates a little differently. It has this handle with this notch in it and this notch right here, if you can see that, 
That goes in a notch in the back of the jack. Let me push that forward so you can see where I'm talking about. Right here. And that's how you open and close the cylinder. Right now it's closed. There it's open. And I approached this jack the same way I did that one. This one worked, didn't work at all. Um, on this particular jack, I want to draw your attention to something else too. Right there. That's a plunger cylinder and that has to be pretty smooth also. Uh, because that's all sealed in there with O-rings, what have you and cleaned up. But you can see that jack's coming right up and it didn't work at all when I started on it. All I did was oil all the components, add it, jack flu or uh, hydraulic jacking oil and loosened it up. This wouldn't, this wouldn't turn down there and it, it just didn't work at all. And I spent several minutes, hours, and you can see right there it's all the way up. Now I'll show you how this one works going down. I just turn it a little bit. One of the reasons it goes down like that is it's got springs in there that uh, draw that down and I'm just really satisfied with what I ended up here with these jacks. <laughs> Um, for no more than I paid for them, the shape they were in, a lot of people would have just junked them, but I didn't. This cover right here comes off, two screws, one on each side, and down in there is a little bolt you take out and you pour your oil in the cylinder, just like on the red one. That's how I save these old jacks. I hope you... I enjoyed the video I just brought to you where I've taken the old junk lamps and and brought at least one back to life out of that and and these discarded jacks they were they were junk so was that light it's just pure and simple junk and with a little bit of effort and a few tools, not many. I was able to, to bring both of those back to life. So I saved the light, I saved the jacks, and I actually think I will use those jacks in this shop. Tell me about the things that you've repaired and fixed. I've told you a lot about what I've done, but I want to hear what you're doing. Tell me about your repairs where you've taken junk and brought something back to life. My motto, using new to bring life to the old, stands true in this. And if you like videos like this, I'd encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I, I do various videos where I talk about things, broken junk, tell stories about my life and also share a little bit on, on nature. I have a channel just specific for nature. It's called uh, Live Life Together, Marvin R. Schwartz. Um, <clears throat> but if you appreciate this video here, you may appreciate this one right here where I took an old junk joiner didn't work except for years. I mean, this is an old one, and I brought it back to life. Can it be fixed? Sometimes, but not always. Can you fix it? You're darn right you can. Until the next one.